men wanted for hazardous journey. Low wages, bitter cold, long hours of complete darkness. Safe return, doubtful. Honor and recognition in event of success. This is the ad that allegedly appeared in The Times when Sir Ernest Shackleton decided to build a crew for his famous Antarctic expedition. Even though the ad might just be a myth, the journey itself became one of the greatest survival stories of all time. Sir Ernest Shackleton didn't really need any advertisement at all. He was already a legend among British seamen and explorers alike. In 1908, he led the British Antarctic expedition and claimed a Victorian land plateau region of Antarctica for the crown. In the same expedition, people from Shackleton's party became the first to reach the top of Mount Erebus, Antarctica's second largest volcano. His new daring idea for a hazardous journey gained so much attention from newspapers that soon Sir Shackleton had a crowd of volunteers knocking at his door. He carefully selected only 27 of them, and oh boy did he choose wisely. They were men of steel, no doubt, knowing what a huge goal they set for themselves. With those men, Ernest Shackleton intended to reach Antarctica and cross the whole continent via the South Pole. Not exactly a walk in the park, if you ask me. On December 5, 1914, they left the shores of South Georgia in a ship called Endurance. Endurance was one of the best ships of its time to deal with ice. She had a sturdy hull, an 85-inch thick keel, and a 350-horsepower steam engine. With all that might, she could ram and break tons of ice with ease. But still, she had one crucial weakness. She was designed to crush the ice, but not to sustain being trapped in it. If she would ever get caught by ice building up around her and pushing with all its weight, she would be crushed by the immense pressure. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. This was a bad year for crossing the icy waters of Wet LC. At first, Endurance was managing the drifting ice easily. But on January 18th, it finally overcame her. Huge slabs of drifting ice, called pack ice, have an unpredictable nature. It comes and goes, and can turn into a small iceberg in just several days. So this ice is one of the most dangerous kinds imaginable. The initial hope of Sir Shackleton and his crew was that the ice wouldn't build up around the ship too much. But by the 24th of January, it was obvious that the pressure on the ship's hull would only get worse. The next few days, the crew tirelessly crushed and sawed off the ice around Endurance with their own hands. Not to free the ship completely, that would be impossible, but to push Endurance back and leave the rest of the ice to her engine and keel. This idea was promising, but eventually fell short. The ice in front of the ship was just too strong, and the progress was too small. The only hope for endurance was if it could stay undamaged until spring. Passing the winter on a ship trapped in ice is no joke. The pressure on the ship's hull was rising, just like the pressure on the seaman's will. If not for Sir Shackleton's skill of managing his crew, this story might have ended right here. But they believed in their captain, who they referred to simply as boss. He sustained discipline on his ship by implementing a stable routine for each and every crew member. Everyone stayed busy, brightening each day with some kind of fulfillment. They even found a way to place soccer on the ice around the ship. Everyone on the ship knew that their one hope in such a dire situation was Sir Shackleton's command, so their spirit remained untouched. Despite all the effort of shoveling new ice and snow building up around the ship, the pressure on the ship only rose. Spring didn't bring the much-needed relief for the endurance. From time to time, the crew would hear unpleasant crackles and shock sounds. At first, Shackleton said it was whales passing underneath the ice. But everybody knew that the ship may soon start to crumble. Summer came and went, only to bring more young ice. On October 27th, Shackleton ordered his men to abandon ship, which was already heavily damaged. He promised the crew that he would bring them home, saying it in the most simple and encouraging way he could. 
we're going home. But notes in his diary reveal his uncertainty. The task is to reach land with all the members of the expedition. It's hard to write how I feel. The camp was settled about a mile away from the ship. The crew still had some supplies and three lifeboats, but the resources were limited and they were isolated from the world, drifting on ice across the Weddell Sea with no means to get more food. On November 21st, 1915, endurance is finally crushed and buried under the ice, much like the hope of fulfilling the goal of the expedition. On December 20th, Shackleton decides that they'll head towards what he thought was the nearest land, Paulette Island. What they didn't realize is that the ice they were marching through was drifting toward the east, and Paulette Island was on the west. By the end of their journey through the ice fields, they were even further from land than when they began. Still, this march was not completely pointless. At the end of it, Shackleton and his men spotted another island, Elephant Island. Stepping on solid ground felt like euphoria for 28 tired seamen. First days on land were spent refilling food supplies with wildlife. It was their first warm meal in months. But their joy was overshadowed by one terrible truth. Elephant Island was not much better than a drifting ice slab. They had no way to send a message, and no ships would ever be coming their way there would be no rescue. But Sir Shackleton wasn't one to surrender and leave his men to certain demise. Instead, he took one lifeboat and only five men and went off to find help. Yes, he knew what they were facing. Their destination was back to South Georgia, 800 miles away, and they would have to cross the stormiest part of the ocean with waves more than 50 feet high. Shackleton left command with his righteous right hand, Frank Wilde. Allegedly, they were so close, they could finish each other's sentences. It was Wilde who helped keep the crew safe. They were cold and didn't have much food. But still, he managed to hold them together well, and even built a hut for them from the two remaining lifeboats. Meanwhile, Sir Shackleton and the five other men started their journey on the 24th of April, 1916. Behind their back, another field of pack ice came and closed off the island from them. There was no turning back. The most fearsome enemy of seamen in the cold is the water itself. If your clothes get wet, there's almost no way to get warm again. Imagine what happened to those men in the little lifeboat going through the huge waves. Ice was building up on the boards of the boat, increasing its weight drastically, along with its chances of sinking. One time, Shackleton thought he saw a line of white skies, a crack in the storm clouds. But he soon realized it was the top of a gigantic wave. This was the inexplicable horror they dealt with as they inched slowly toward South Georgia. During this month-long journey, they witnessed storms unlike any of them had ever seen. They had to fight not only for their own lives, but for the lives of their 22 friends still waiting on Elephant Island to be rescued. Maybe that's what drove them to succeed after all. On May 10th, they finally reached the shores of South Georgia. Not welcoming shores with warm beds and a good meal, be assured. It was rocky cliffs with absolutely no place to land. It took a whole day to manage the landing, and even when they stepped on the ground, it wasn't the victory they already well deserved. They had to climb the cliffs and cross several mountain ridges to get to civilization. And their sheer exhaustion only left them a little time to do so. On their way, Shackleton even restricted himself and his men from sleeping more than five minutes at a time, in fear that they wouldn't wake up. When they reached the last ridge, they were at their limit. But suddenly, a familiar sound brought back their energy. A whistle that's used to wake up whalers in the morning. The whalers knew Shackleton, but at this point, it was pretty hard to recognize him. His bad condition alarmed the whalers, and in no time, they were helping to rescue their friends on Elephant Island and, what a miracle, they were all alive and well. They survived. As Shackleton recalls, 
He and his five comrades were thrilled to find the Whaler village. Not because they knew they were safe, but because they knew their friends would be saved. And this is how the story of the most miraculous survival ended. Sir Shackleton may have never reached his goals of crossing the Antarctic continent from shore to shore, but his name will always be remembered in the history of Antarctic exploration. So what's your favorite story about explorers or fearless seamen in general? Let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go anywhere just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the Bright Side of Life.